Hi, everyone. We are so glad that you are here for Kansas's birthday, and I'm going to hand it over to our special guest, where they're going to talk about exploring Native American heritage in our wonderful state of Kansas. It's all yours, guys. Well, good morning. Thanks for having us. Uh, my name is Dal Dombo, and uh, this is uh, Veronica Gillette. We are in charge of uh, running the Native American Indian Education Program for the Wichita Public Schools. And what we're going to do today, I know a lot of you guys have probably studied Native culture, Native history in some form or fashion, but what we're going to do is kind of broaden that. Um, whenever I was in school, whenever I was your age, and whenever we studied anything that had to do with uh, culture, whether it was Native culture or any culture, um, especially historically, it was always just grainy black and white photos, and you couldn't really tell or get a sense of what it was like for that culture, uh, and especially with the Native American culture. And what we're going to do, hopefully, if we can do this the right way, we're going to kind of help you see that uh, my ancestors, the way they lived, is really no different than the way we live today. Um, one of the things I want to talk to you guys first about is when you guys hear the term Native American, there's automatically a picture that comes up in your head. You have a picture in your head about what that looks like. Um, and I've done this long enough to know that the picture that's in your head, I don't look like that picture. Um, the picture in your head it usually looks like somebody that's got long braided hair, maybe have uh, war paint on their face, maybe wearing heathers, feathers in their hair, or like a war bonnet, uh, dressed in buckskin clothing, wearing moccasins, speaking no English or speaking broken English, uh, carrying around a bow and arrow, riding on a teepee, hunting buffalo, um, and that's pretty much kind of how it goes. And the reason I know that's what you're looking at or that's what you're what you have in your head is because that's what you've always been fed. That's everything that you see today, whether it's books, uh, cartoons, TV shows, movies that have any depiction of native culture. That's usually how it is. And that's what I call uh, the Hollywood version of Native Americans. But really that uh, narrow uh, gap as far as the the image you see is just a narrow part uh, of Native culture that is based off of what they call Plains Indians. Um, if you study uh, tribes that were on the East Coast or the West Coast, you'll find out that they didn't live in teepees. They lived in permanent dwellings that uh, similar to homes today. Uh, they didn't hunt buffalo. They hunted, but they didn't hunt buffalo. Uh, Plains Indians uh, hunted buffalo. They uh, roamed. Uh, all the way through, you know, up into Canada, all the way down into uh, Mexico, South America. So wherever that buffalo, you know, kind of like the song where the buffalo roam, that's where we went. And everything that we had as far as day to day living came from that buffalo. And hopefully, if like I said, if we do a good enough job, we'll uh, show you guys that. And we're just going to show you that, um, like I said, my ancestors the way they lived way back then is really no different than the way we live today. The only difference is the technology is better. Uh, when I say technology, I mean, when I was your age, we didn't have cell phones. Um, so you guys have cell phones now. Uh, when I was your age, the gaming system that I had was a joystick and a red button. You know, you guys have the, and plus it was wired to the actual gaming system. So you couldn't go very far. Um, so that's what technology is. So what we're going to do is I want you guys to use your imagination for a minute. Uh, what we're going to do is we're going to take just a regular everyday occurrence like today, sometime this evening when you guys are home, you guys are all going to sit down and have dinner. Um, assuming mom and dad don't bring home McDonald's or if you guys don't go out to eat, um, if you guys are sitting at home, usually how it goes is you guys may be sitting at home, maybe watching some TV, maybe playing some video games or doing something to entertain yourself. Mom and dad come home, go to the kitchen, maybe get some stuff out of the cabinets, maybe get something out of the refrigerator, put it on the counter, uh, do some prep work, put it in the oven or maybe put it on the stove. Within an hour, you guys are eating dinner. So and that's pretty much how it goes 
throughout the country. And it's gone like that all the time for all of human history. Everybody eats. So let's just take that simple scenario and we're going to translate it. And like I said, I'm going to show you how my ancestors lived the exact same way. That's the same routine they had. Just the process from getting from A to B is different. And you guys will see that. So what I want you guys to do is imagine yourself sitting right where you're sitting. Um, no matter where it's at, sitting where you're sitting. Uh, but I want you to imagine that it's 500 years ago. Okay, so 1524. So that's a long time ago. All right. Uh, immediately, you're going to see some things that are different. Immediately, you're going to notice some different things right off the bat. Number one, your school's not there. Big plus, right? Uh, so there's no school. Uh, but in actuality, there's nothing there. I mean, you're not going to see any buildings, no houses, cars, fences, playground, uh, cement, sidewalks, nothing. Everything you see around you is nothing but uh, flat, overgrown prairie land. And uh, and since, unfortunately, we live in the flattest state in the country, that's all you see for miles. So if it's 500 years ago, you're still going to have to have dinner. OK, so uh, I'll just we'll just kind of give you a peek into that. So what we're going to do is we're going to show you guys some uh, some artifact replicas of how and the, the things that my ancestors used back then for their everyday life. And everything we've got is made exactly the same way as they were made hundreds of years ago. OK, and they were made. They're made out of the exact same materials, exact same, exact same animal parts, everything. And we'll kind of. Uh, go over all of that as we go through it. So the first thing I will uh, tell you guys is since the image in your head is more geared towards uh, Plains Indians, that's what we'll keep it to. So Plains Indians, uh, they hunted buffalo, obviously. And they hunted, they used uh, bows and arrows. So, and Veronica will kind of show you guys what uh, the bows look like. As you guys can see, um, the bows and arrows that they used, the bows that they used were a little bit smaller than what you would find today at a sporting goods store. And they had to be uh, because they were riding on horses. It had to be something small and something light. Uh, and as you can see, that's made out of the wood, the wood that it's made out of. What they did is they would just whittle it down to the size that they needed. And then when you get wood wet or you get you steam the wood, it's pliable, which means you can bend it to any shape you want. And that's what they did. And then they would put it between rocks until it uh, until it hardened up again. But once it hardened up, it stayed it kept the shape. And that's why uh, it looks the way it's supposed to look now. And they'd also sand it down. Now, I know you can't do it here, but if we were to pass this around to you guys, looking at it looks perfect. But if you rub your hands and your fingers along it, you can feel the bumps and grooves in it. So it's uh, there's the little imperfections, and everything, but that's because it was handmade. Now, for instance, like the the bow, the string for it uh, is what they call sinew. Now, sinew, for those of you guys that don't know, are the tendons that run along the spine of the buffalo. And this is uh, what it looks like in raw form. And it's so it, it's used to hold the muscles together. So it has to be very, very strong. And as you can tell, the way the Veronica has it, there's some really thin threads on there. And what they would do is they would pull these threads and tie them together. And then when they get a, enough of them, they would braid them together. And when they braid them together, it creates basically an unbreakable type of string, which is on the bows. Now, they would also use the sinew for fishing line whenever they were uh, doing going fishing but that's what they would use for the bows now the arrows basically kind of made the same way they would just get sticks you know from a tree and they would haul it now obviously sticks don't come that straight <laughs> so what they would do is they would have to have a different type of rock like a softer but a coarse type of rock like Veronica has here and they would split it in half and they would groove out the middle of it and then once they get the stick once they steamed it to the size that they wanted they would put it in between there and they had put the rock in there like that and they would uh, twist it and they would take it back and forth in that thing and that what that does it does two things number one it helps straighten it out but it also helps uh, sand it down and that way it straightens it and it gets it smooth 
So, and whenever you're shooting, and those of you guys that have ever shot bow and arrows before, you want the arrows to be as straight and as smooth as possible. That way you get better distance and better accuracy. And that's what these from, and I know you guys probably can't see it, but if you look at the arrow itself, um, uh, on this instance, you can see sinew uh, is holding the arrowhead on there, but also the, the arrow itself isn't completely straight. There's just a slight bend in it. So, like I said, these were made by hand, so they're as straight as they can possibly get. So, which means they're not mass produced, which means they're not made in a factory. So, and the feathers on the end of it are just going to be like turkey or quail feathers is what they use for that. So, that's what the arrows look like. So now, obviously, they're going to have to carry their bow and arrows. So they would use those of you guys that have seen the uh, Marvel movies. Uh, Hawkeye carries all his arrows in what they call a quiver. And this is what their quivers would look like. Now, this particular animal, as you guys can see the face there, uh, this is a beaver pelt. So from the beaver, what they would do is they would skin it, and then they would uh, use the sinew as sewing uh, thread, and they would sew it together. And then they would have the two pouches for one for the bow and one for the arrows. <clears throat> Excuse me. And then, as you can see, they also have a shoulder strap, which is just a piece of tanned hide. And they would be able to throw that on there, and then they would be able to draw bows and arrows from there. And again, this is smaller than what you'd see today, but that's because they had to uh, be able to carry it with them whenever they're on uh, horseback. So, so this is what the bows and arrows would look like. So this would be pretty much, now we have all everything we need. And that's kind of the equivalent of going to the grocery store and going to the meat section to get your main course. So now we've got our main course. Dinner, obviously, if you're like I was when I was your age, I didn't like vegetables, but it's part of the meal. So, um, you know, today we go to the uh, grocery store, we go to the section that the produce section, you can get your fruits, you get your vegetables. But as we'd mentioned, uh, those of you guys that have studied native culture, especially with uh, Plains Indians, you know that the Plains Indians were uh, nomadic, meaning they traveled. So like I said, wherever the buffalo went, that's where we went. So we didn't establish you know, we just we didn't just live in one place. We followed. So since that's how the tribes were, um, they weren't farmers, so they didn't plant crops, but there were crops that grew on the wild. So in order to be able to harvest those crops, uh, to be able to get that food, rather than being on all fours and trying to dig things up with by hand, they had to come up with uh, a way to be able to get into the dirt and to get these fruits and vegetables so that they could eat. So one of the tools that they came up with is this right here. And it's called, and as you guys can see uh, by looking at it, it looks very similar to a modern day uh, garden hoe. Okay, now the, the top part of it uh, obviously is a lot bigger here. And the garden hoe uh, here, that is made of the scapula of the buffalo. The scapula is like your shoulder blades if you on your back where it kind of sticks out that's this part of the buffalo so obviously bigger than humans so this is what they would use and they would just tie it to a, a big sturdy stick using uh, rawhide which is hide from the buffalo okay that's not tanned and once you get it wet then uh, you know it, it holds on to its shape so keep in mind this is uh very similar to today's uh, garden hoe and but keep in mind this was they they had done this they had to invent this and you'll notice a lot of the stuff that we bring out today and we're going to show you that modern day equivalent mimics these uh these types of uh tools and equipment and understand these weren't invented yet they had to be invented and they were invented by a people that according to history books, were uh, savages, uncivilized, could not live on their own. Uh, they needed uh, westward expansion so that they could live. But truth is, they've been, we had been here for thousands of years before Columbus sailed the ocean blue. So that's just one of the, one of the uh, tools that they uh, came up with to be able to help harvest uh, some of the fruits and vegetables. Another uh, tool that they had was 
this obviously looks like a, a rake, and that's exactly what it is. This type of rake, uh, though it served its purpose, it was more akin to today's uh, loose leaf rakes. Some of you guys that have helped mom and dad rake leaves in the fall, uh, that have the rakes that have those floppy tines on them. This is kind of what it, I mean, it's, it's sturdy and it does the job, but since they're made of sticks, uh, they're not going to be very sturdy. So if you have to kind of dig in a little bit on the dirt, uh, this isn't what you do. You would just use this to kind of uh, gather some stuff up off the ground. Uh, if you needed something with a little more power, <laughs> uh, this is what they would use. All this is, is a deer antler uh, tied to a very big sturdy stick. And this is more equivalent to the iron rake that we know today. So those are the types of tools that they came up with for, uh, for gardening so that they could have their fruits and their vegetables. Now, since now we have fruits, vegetables, now we have pretty much everything we need for a meal, but we have to have something to drink. So obviously uh, 500 years ago, there were no quick trips, there were no Starbucks, anything like that. So had to figure out a way to uh, something to drink, which obviously is water. Um, where they got water today, you just go out in the hallway, there's a drinking fountain or there's water faucets, there's sinks. But again, 500 years ago, those didn't exist. So what they did is they got water from rivers, streams, creeks, things like that. There's a part of the buffalo that they would use, specific part of the buffalo they would use to transport liquids. And that uh, body part is what they call, or what you guys have as well, is the bladder. And the buffalo, this is a buffalo bladder. As you can tell, pretty good size. <laughs> uh, but again, when you're talking about buffaloes, they're anywhere from 2,000 to 3,000 pounds full grown. So everything that they have, we have, but they're just going to be a bigger size. And this bladder, what they would do is they would use the bladder and they would tie, or they would sew on a piece of tanned hide at the top. That would create the opening. Now, what they would do is they would, whatever water uh, stream they've used, they would run that through the water, and this would begin to fill up. And just like our bladders, whenever this gets full, it starts to expand. And when it expands, it can expand to about twice its size. So that obviously is going to carry quite a bit of water. And then once they did that, they can cinch it up with those strings right there, like Veronica's doing, and then that kind of acts like a handle. So if we had one person that took three or four of these a piece. And if we had two or three people that went to get water, they'd be able to get quite a bit of water. And that'd be enough water for everybody uh, for the entire day, not just one meal. But this is what they would do to transport the water. And as you can tell with ours, it's uh, been used quite a bit. <laughs> so, uh, but that's that's what they use to transport liquids. So, um, so now we've got the main course we have got our fruits and vegetables, and now we have the bladder so that we can get our water. Now, basically right now, we're at the part, uh, we have everything and we can put it out on the counter. Now we have to uh, do our prep work. So doing the prep work, if you've got, you know, 3,000 pound buffalo sitting in front of you, as well as a lot of uh, fruits, vegetables that are all raw, you got to do the prep work. To do the prep work, you need knives. OK, so although there were a lot of different knives that they invented and they used for different purposes, this is basically the most basic ones that they had. And um, I, I don't know if you guys can tell, but the handles for it are uh, made out of bone. It's like a leg bone from a smaller animal, like a deer. And as you can tell, as Veronica's showing you guys inside of there, that's how they had to groove it out. They had to groove out an area so where they can put the stone that's in there now. Now, when you look inside that groove, the first thing we always usually hear when we do these presentations live is that, man, there's a lot of dirt in there. But understand that's not dirt. In order to keep that stone in there, they had to use an adhesive. Uh, that he adhesive is called hide glue. And hide glue is the parts of the buffalo, if we could not use it to eat, to um, for uh, rituals or ceremonies or to make uh, weapons or tools or equipment or anything like that, then we put it in a big pot and then boil it down. And you boil it down, and this process took hours. 
and eventually it reduces down into a real thick, dark, sticky substance. And that's what that is. That's hide glue. And you can actually, in some craft stores today, you can still buy hide glue. Um, it's very, very good. It, uh, it, it's, in my opinion, it's better than the super glues or the gorilla glues. The only drawback is it, it, it stinks very bad. I mean, it's got a very unpleasant odor. But this is what they would use. And now the rocks that they put in there uh, look like this. And what they would do is they would uh, go through a process called flint napping. Now, flint napping is they would take one of the tines of a deer and they would chip away towards the edge of it. As you can tell, you can see how it's chipped. They would chip away on both sides of it to make an edge. And once they make an edge, then when they would to sharpen it, they would sharpen it the exact same way we sharpen knives today. Just under a smooth, uh, wet stone, they would sharpen it. And that's how they use and that's what they would use uh, to cut open everything and prepare. So. Now that we've got, like I said, we've got our main course, we've got our vegetables, we've got water. Now that we've got everything uh, to um, to do our uh, prep work, uh, we have to. And again, since this is 500 years ago, like today, when you are tonight, when you guys have dinner, you guys will sit at the dinner table or maybe sit in front of the TV on furniture. That stuff didn't exist, so they also had to find a way to sit down, okay? So one thing and one thing only uh, serves as something that you could put on the ground to sit down on that's not only uh, soft, but it also protects you from just being sitting on the ground. And that's uh, uh, the actual hide of the buffalo. Now we do have uh, a whole hide, but I don't think we it, it wouldn't fit in the camera. <laughs> So, because it's pretty massive, but this, what Veronica has here is a small portion of another hide. And as you can see, that's the hide, and then the back part of it, that's the skin of it. Uh, but the, but you can tell this, I mean, that's real buffalo uh, uh, hide. This is shaggy and as long as it is, that's basically the hump part of it, or at least a portion of it. Uh, but what they would do when they had these hides, they would use that as either a rug or their bedding, their blanket. Or most of the time when you see movies about old Westerns or whatever that have uh, Native Americans in it, usually in the winter scenes, uh, they would use them as coats. And that's um, that's what it would do. Now, on the back side of it with the skin, uh, we talk today a lot about either tanned hide or uh, raw hide. Tan hide is like when you have, if you guys have anything, any uh, leather products like either uh, jackets, uh, belts, shoes, uh, backpacks, purses, things like that, that's pliable, soft and pliable, that goes through a tanning process. If it's not tanned, it's called rawhide, and that's the back of this is basically rawhide. You can, it feels like real hard plastic, but it helps uh, if you get the, uh, now both of them are part of the hide, the skin, but if you get the skin wet, if you get it wet, like this part of it, if we were to get it wet, it would become soft and pliable. And then once it dries, it dries hard again. So a lot of the uh, tools and equipment that we used, like for instance, these two, they're same hide, but one, one is raw hide and one is tanned hide. And the tanning process that they did is what they would do is they'd take the hide and they would spread it out and they would use the brains of the buffalo and they would uh, wipe it all over the hide. And then they would stretch it out, let it dry out, and they would do that a couple more times. And that uh, makes it soft, it makes it pliable, and more importantly, it made it weatherproof. So that's what happened with it. And the raw hide, like I said, if you get it wet, it feels like tan hide it feels soft and it's pliable and what they would do is they would get it wet like that and then all the equipment and the tools that we showed today they would wrap it up and tie all that stuff off and then once it got dry it dried tough and dried hard so that way it was able to keep uh keep everything together so like for instance this is uh rawhide it's very tough but when it, but they got it wet and then they tied the antler to it and now once it dried it holds that antler to the uh to the stick so that's the difference between tanned hide and raw hide so um 
I hope you guys, I know we went really fast on all of that. Uh, hopefully you guys uh, uh, have a better understanding now of how my ancestors uh, lived and, and can see that their day-to-day -day life was really no different than the way we live today. Just the process to get from A to B is different. That's the only difference. So uh, again, we hope you guys learned something today. Uh, and more importantly, we hope you guys uh, gained a better appreciation uh, for Native culture. So as you're growing up and going through school, whenever you guys start uh, learning more and more about Native history and Native culture, uh, you guys will see that, like I said, it it really wasn't no difference other than, you know, the technology today is better. So uh, I don't know what time we have here. I don't know if we have uh, time for to answer a couple of questions, if anybody's had any questions. Um, as some questions are coming in, I do. It seems like um, they use the entire um, animal. So if I used a, if I had a small animal, I used the entire animal. If I had a buffalo, I used the entire animal. Can you talk about um, if they didn't? Is there a part of the animal that they couldn't use, but they really used um, their entire resources? It seems like. I, I, am I wrong? Because I know we saw the bladder, we saw the scapula, the the shoulder. We saw bone with the knives were made out of bones. We saw the hide is probably blankets, comfortable seating, bedding. It was used for a lot of different purposes, maybe clothing for some people, for some too. Um, one, is there a part that they didn't use? No, it was used for everything. I mean, the, like I said, the buffalo was our livelihood. I mean, it, we used it for, I mean, we either, if, uh, if we couldn't use it for clothing, uh, for uh, tools, equipment, weapons, ceremonies, if if there were our food, if we couldn't use it for something like that, like I said, we would like sometimes like the hooves or something like that, we would uh, boil it down and use it uh, and it became uh, hide glue, which is something we use a lot of. So I mean, to like I said, the one example we used was the knives. Um, and what we use today, the things that we showed, it's just, honestly just a very very small portion of the types of things that we're fortunate to have at our disposal i mean if we were to bring out everything as far as artifacts and uh, things like that that we have we could easily do probably about a four or five hour presentation i mean we have that much stuff and it's Amazing. and yeah it was i mean the bones some of the bones we use i mean we've got a, a sled that was made out of the ribs uh, we've got also they used ribs uh, for uh, different games that they could play like on ice, kind of similar to uh, uh, shuffleboard. I mean, yeah, they used uh, we used every part of the buffalo. So no, there was nothing that ever went to waste. One question did come up. You mentioned before that they use the buffalo in, in our area since we're it's Kansas State. We're talking about the Native Americans here. Did they use the other animals that we might find in Kansas? Like I still see deer. Did they use others for tools or um, I, I, that's the question is yes. beyond yes. buffalo, what was used? I know you mentioned it briefly, but are there specific animals that come to mind that they also use for tools and eating and protection? Yes. Uh, buffaloes are primarily the primary source of everything that we use. But yeah, we they also hunted uh, uh, deer. Uh, like you said, with the quiver, we had the uh, beaver. Um, Understand, back then, anything that we, we didn't kill for sport, uh, we didn't kill just to be hunting, uh, like today, just hunting. Oh, we got a trope. There's a purpose. You didn't you didn't go hunting for something unless you needed something specific. Like for instance, uh, the rake we showed uh, that had the antler. I mean, they didn't just kill that deer just to get that antler, just to make a rake. They would use it and they would eat the, they would eat the meat just like we do today. Uh, they would use the hide for different things. And like you said, yeah, hide could be used for clothing. Uh, you know, the teepees, every part of the, every part of any animal that they hunted had a purpose. And like I said, we didn't, didn't hunt just to be hunting. It was, it was for a specific purpose. And we made sure we didn't uh, just leave it, you know, for one thing. I mean, we use it for everything. Very cool. Well, I want to thank all of our teachers out there. We we had up to 80 classrooms 
Oh, um, wow. So hundreds of kids saw and one of them, McLean second grade, thank you for coming. And I know there's more out there. I can't say hello to all of you, but they really loved, somebody mentioned seeing that hide. I think because we see it, even though this is a two dimensional, a picture of a buffalo, you forget how thick that fur really is. And yeah. I know we couldn't see the big massive one. It would have filled the screen, but just seeing that little one, you forget that how like how thick that is just from it's still two dimensional here, but you holding right. up allows us to see that. So um, I appreciate you so much adding to our Kansas day. Um, we really appreciate everybody who joined us. Thank you so much. And hopefully we'll be back at more and you guys, thank you so much for supporting um, our schools around Kansas and sharing your knowledge today for um, echoes of the plane and exploring the native American heritage in, in Kansas. Thank you so much guys. Thank you.